hi everyone welcome to our channel so this is the video 3 of this dotnet 6 api and react js crud example demo so in this video we are going to create dotnet 6 web api application and we are going to install nt framework core and then we are going to configure database context okay first let's understand what is api briefly okay web api is a framework for building the http services that can be accessed by any client like browser running application mobile running application or desktop running application okay in simple terminology api is application programming interface means an interface module that can be programmatically function that can request via http calls to save or fetch data from the server so this is the application so it contains the modules or functions where we can request them for getting the data or sending the data okay so if you observe this api depends upon database for for fetching the data because obviously data will be stored in database not in api application so they are connected internally and api requests the data from the database okay and that data converted as a json and written to the clients like applications running on the browser desktop or mobile application okay that is the brief overview of the web api now to create a .NET 6 web api we can either use two ides like visual studio 2022 or visual studio code editor using the .NET cli okay the most recommended is visual studio 2022 okay so to download the community version you can go like visual studio download and here you can see 2020 and here you can see community professional and enterprise for learners to utilize the vs visual studio freely download the community edition okay if you download this community edition all the required packages of dotnet 6 everything automatically installed into our local machine so another way of implementing is using the dotnet cli okay for that we will use vs code so in this demo i am going to use dotnet cli okay because i have some problem with installing visual studio 2022 and dotnet 6 only runs for visual studio 2022 so whoever having a problem are using mac os okay those can easily use the cli command so in this demo i am going to use the visual studio code editor along with the dotnet cli command since i am using the cl i should install the dotnet 6 sdk explicitly okay to install dotnet 6 such like dotnet 6 downloads and you can see a microsoft link if you click over it and you can see the different versions of dotnet 6 and so these are all versions of dotnet 6 only just some patch patches are or add-ons with minor versions okay so we should have the sdk installed for visual studio this sdk is automatically get installed along with the visual studio so for visual studio users no need to bother about explicitly installing the dotnet 6 sdk okay now in this dotnet uh, 6 based on your operating system you can install x64 or x64 or armx64 like that for windows user you can install the x64 sdk okay so that is the installation process okay now let's go and create the dotnet 6 application so here is the folder right previously we have created our react js application so here only what i will do i am going to create the dotnet 6 web api application for that i am going to use cli commands okay so the cli command is like dotnet new web api 
hyphen o and name of your project okay so i will name it like react api dot demo okay so let's run it to create the application and we can observe dotnet 6 application created successfully let's open the project okay so let's go to the folder application folder okay react api dot demo okay now to open the visual studio code simple command that is like code hyphen space so this is our dotnet 6 application and to confirm the version of our project open the dot cs project file okay and you can observe the dotnet 6 application dotnet 6 as a target framework okay and the first thing we need to understand few services and middlewares that are predefined added to our program.cs file okay so this is my program.cs file and here you can see a service like add controllers so this will for api controllers mapping okay so this won't work for views and treasure pages it is only works for the api controllers okay and endpoint explorer gives metadata and add swagger generation uses the swagger page swagger page is nothing but a testing page for the developers where all the endpoints in our applications are li listed there and we can test there okay so moving on we can understand what is swagger page as well okay so those are the predefined services and coming to the middleware you can see for development mode enable the swagger page so for uh, it is like uh, only we have to enable the swagger for only development because if you enable it for the production it might be accessed by other users also okay which is not good security reason and https redirection and authorization middleware and map controller nothing but the routing of our uh, api okay so these are the services and middleware uh, we have to know before we start our coding okay now the thing is now i want to establish a communication between my api application and my database so to do it pretty much easily microsoft provided a library called nt framework core with the help of that library we can establish the connection setup very easily okay so let's install it so we have to search like ef core nuget okay so go to this link and since i am using cli command i am going to copy from here if you are using visual studio code either you can directly uh, search for the package from the window of package manager or you can open the package manager console as well okay so copy from here open the terminal paste it and install it so this library mainly is for querying the record but to communicate with the sql we need to install one more library like ef core sql server library which is dependent upon the nt framework core so to get install that we have to search like ef core sql nuget okay this is the library we have to install now that is microsoft.ntframework.sql okay copy the command and install it okay after installing the packages we have to add the connection string into our application for that i am going to add for the demo purpose in the app settings.development.json so here there will be a default property like connection string inside of it we have to define our connection string property name so i will define like react.js demo connection okay so here please add your connection string okay like this add your connection string so it is very easy to frame your connection string in the connection string we should have the data source 
data source is nothing but name of your sql db server name it is my local db okay next you should have initial catalog that is nothing but the database name okay so my database name is little bit different let me change it okay that that is my database name so integrated security true that means i am using windows authentication so if you are not using windows authentication you have to specify like username equal to your username colon password equal to your password colon you should define like that and connection time the timeout is added here and encryption false it is normal plain text only right and there are some additional settings you might no need to add but just i added it okay next we have to develop our database context so what is database context means it is a class that act as a database inside of the application okay so it is replica to our sql database okay it will contain set of registered classes those classes again represents the sql tables okay so first we have to create our table class instead of creating our database database context class okay so here my table is super villain right for that we need to create one class so this creating classes and database context approach is called code first with existing database means i am going to consume the existing db with my code okay so what i will do let me create a folder like data inside of it one more folder sorry for that entities okay so this entities folder contains all my table classes so i am going to add my new table class here that is supervillains.cs now in this entity or a class we have to def define all table class column names as properties okay so let's copy all the names and let's create them as a properties the question mark next to the type represents it is a nullable column type okay means it will accept the nullable so finally our table class look like this the thing we have to do now is we have to define our database context class okay uh, database context class name in general it is good to give the name of our database okay so what i will do in in the data folder itself i am going to create the new class okay context.c so to this context class we have to register our table class okay and also it is now at present it is a plain class to make it db context class we should inherit the db context okay that loads from the microsoft nt framework package which we just installed few seconds back and let's create the constructor and to this constructor we have to define database context options and type is nothing but our context class type and these options must be passed to base class nothing but db context so these options gets injected the settings we register them in the 
program.cs file in the next step. So now in this class we have to register all our table classes. To register the table classes, we have to register them as a properties by encapsulating around the DB set. Okay. DB set represents that type is a class table class type. And my class Okay, and import the namespace. So that is the final look of our database contest class. And now we have to register this class in the program.cs file so that we can inject this React JS demo YT contest class wherever we want. Okay, for that go to program.cs file. Okay. And here as a builder service, we can register it. We make sure to register above this line only. Any service we should register above this line. Okay. Builder dot service dot add db context. And here we have to pass our db context type. Okay. And import the namespace. And here we can configure some settings like passing the constraint string, like those things. Okay. Option start. Use SQL server. So we have to use this service. And to this service, we have to pass our connection string. So our connection string is, is in JSON file, right? To read it. The builder service itself helps us. So builder dot configuration dot get connection string. Okay. And to this method, we have to pass our uh, connection string name, property name as a input. Okay. Semicolon, semicolon. So that is the service registration, service registration in the program that says so. So with this, we are done with our database contest configuration. Okay, next, what I will do, I am going to implement the read operation. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video delivered some useful information to you all. If you like my video content, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Soon, we are going to meet with new videos. Until then, signing off.